How's it going, little French boy? Who's French? I guess you're not giving French. Do you remember when I would do my French voice in this podcast? I kind of like shocked that you haven't done it in a really long time. Did you hear the news? About? James Charles. What happened to James Charles? Apparently, he is distancing himself from the phrase sisters, and even more so is shutting down sisters apparel, his merchandise. Why? Because he no longer feels connected to the phrase sisters. He doesn't say hi, sisters, anymore. He just says hi? He's like, hey, you guys, welcome back to my channel. Yeah. Wait, what do you think happened there? He Death was like, I want more than sisters. Death comes for all of us. He wants more than sisters. He wants brothers. He in wants the, people. In the... F- out of the ashes of the Sisters Apparel Company will be born a new life, hopefully, for James Charles. Or hopefully not. Good for Depends James for just shutting it. it down. He said, time's up. Time's up. I don't need my apparel anymore. I don't need Wipe apparel. it clean. No one's buying it. Is no one and buying it? That's probably it. part of it. Well, when was the last time that James Charles had the commercial appeal that he had when he launched Sisters Apparel? Like, I almost owned Sisters Apparel. Obvi- I mean, like, you are the target audience for James Charles. I feel like No, forever. I think it's, like, 13-year-olds. Well, I think that, like, f- over the past couple of years, like, you've been, like, standing James. And, like... That's not true. Actually, Ellen, that's not true. That's not the truth, Ellen. What do you mean? Because I just feel like... You have done his voice before. I feel like Correct. you have like talked about dating him in a PR relationship Correct. for a lot of times. Correct. I feel like you almost like would watch like some like of his YouTube videos, like Sister Squad. Is That's that what different. He... That's very, very, very. Just different. felt like you had an eye on James Charles. I've had since my the beginning. yes, but there's there's a difference between standing someone and having your eye on them. There's a difference between standing hmm. someone and keeping an eye out for Selena. And Were I was you keeping, keeping an, an eye, eye out, out for, for James. I was keeping an eye out for James. I will say he did bring me joy yes. in 2020. I loved Instant Influencer, the reality series. It was one of my favorites. I yeah. lived, I loved, I laughed. James Charles did have a chokehold on me at one point, too. It's just like I really loved when he bought his fi- like When he buys house, his family the house, yeah. Which was like beautiful. But Sister Squad is what got me, I think, into the entire family unit of the Dolan twins, Emma and James. Because like... I don't know what happened to me in 2019 that compelled me to get onto YouTube in a big way, but like I was addicted to the Sister Squad, Tana Mojo. Yeah, I feel like those were my main two creators at that time: mm-hmm. um, Emma, James, Ethan, Grayson, and Tana. Yeah. Like yeah. that was it. Watching the Sister Squad go to Vegas is. It changed a lot, I feel like, for you. It actually is. The, I'm not even, I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that that's the reason I'm still alive. I think it, with all sincerity, had the sister squad not gone to Vegas, I would not be here today. I think that video, I think them Do buying you... Christmas gifts for each other, those were times in my life where so there I were felt m- like I... More than two times that you almost ended it all, but really <laughs> yeah, there was sis- plenty of times. There was a Sister times. Squad video that came out that saved your life. Yeah, for sure. I think that like they're the power of those four unique individuals, each bringing something special to the table, was better than any vaccine I've ever gotten. Well, yeah. yeah. Good children. Hey guys, and welcome back to Good Children, the podcast your hosts, Joe Hedges and Andrew Muscarella. Reflect on our 22 years of friendship. Growing up in the late 2000s, early 2010s. Do you say all that? It's like you've never done this podcast before. <laughs> and all of the nostalgia. Trauma. And catered events that come along with it. Maricon. I'm sorry. You wanted to start fresh right off the gate. Yeah, I think, I think about Maricon six times a week it's kind of like you know what it has a nice ring to it you getting called a faggot for like (laughs) seven how long was i would say i was there for about six to seven months i mean like what are you gonna do like they called a spade a spade like i was showing up i was eating their bread probably for the event itself and like if they wanted to call me a faggot 
they were going to call me a faggot. And you thought they were saying gay boy, which was <laughs> honestly. They were saying gay boy. No, I actually didn't even know what they were saying. I thought they were just cursing kind of. And then once I found out it was Mary Cone, like they would hand me the food. They would be like, Mary Cone. <laughs> they, would, they, would, <laughs> they would be like. Anytime they wanted to summon me over to like bring out their drinks, they'd be like, Mary Cone. Like, and you'd here. be like, <laughs> and I'd be like, hey, hey you guys. guys. Hey, you guys. Yeah, I'll take that full tray. For context, yeah. for the, the newer listeners, yeah. Andrew worked at the catering hall and was called a faggot every single day at yeah. 17. Yeah, I was, I was um, 18. No, 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 no. I was, no. In, college. I was in college. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I think I was 19. Um, and I was wearing a tuxedo every single day. Um, you were going working there. doubles. You were working two jobs. That was, was the hardest you ever worked. It was the hardest I ever worked. I was going camp from nine to three, and then I would have thirty minutes to get dressed and then get to the catering hall from pissed. four to twelve. I yeah, I was working like kind of crazy yeah. hour days, and they, for because, what? And now look at your savings. For what? For um, what? So I feel like it is. I mean, I'm sure it's a universal experience, but I think central to Long Island, central to the upbringings that we had, there was no greater experience than attend, no greater and no worse experience than attending a catering, an event at a catering hall. Because the thing about a Long Islander is they they're obsessed with a space that can accommodate about 300 plus people <laughs> yeah. that has like every variation of Italian food possible, and sometimes. It gets explorative. Sometimes you're getting a sushi bar. Sometimes you're getting, you know, oh. a little taco station. Of course. Do we almost want to start at a wedding? I feel like we can just meander, mosey, and mop our way through a uh, lacquered floor of every catering Cater- hall on Long Island. I kind of love that. I feel like, you know, to bring it back to, honestly, kind of the start, I feel like our introductions to catering halls were communion parties, right? Yeah, always, always. And as we know, you, you did number three in the bathroom. Yeah, I had gas pockets at a lot of community parties. I had my communion party at, um, I want to say Manor East. I'll never forget. It was on the second floor. Um, and you dressed like a cowboy. What do you mean? Cow- Just because I was wearing a plaid shirt didn't mean that I was a cowboy. That was cute. I was serving cute. I was serving very, very cute. Yeah. And I was wearing the plaid. I was wearing probably a little chino with a suit jacket, which that was nice of me to put on a suit jacket for you. So don't forget that. I'm sure I was in a suit for your communion. No, you weren't. No shot I was not. I had to be. I had to be. You think you were in a suit in my communion? Listen, I'm all for like... um. I'm all for creative expression through clothing and like changing up, like, you know, not succumbing to the way that the dress codes and like how people dress and like mm. being yourself. But if you're wearing a jean to a wedding, it's just like it's almost worse than if you showed up wearing a, another wedding, a, like another wedding gown, dress. yeah, like a wedding dress. Are people showing up with jeans? I've to seen weddings? some jeans at some weddings I've been to. I've seen a jean. I've been near a jean. Isn't it sometimes, it's like, why are we putting dress codes on things, too? It's like, but well, it's for the people who wear jeans to weddings. And that's what's difficult. You show up and you tell people, don't wear a jean to my wedding. And again, if unless the wedding is like in a Dave and Buster's, mm. it's it doesn't just seem like it would go through my head to say, let me throw on my best pair of Levi 501s. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't get it. And I what I don't get either is like when a wedding is, so, okay. What's the difference between a black tie and a non-black tie wedding? Like, I thought that all weddings are supposed to be formal. Yeah, but black tie means you're wearing a tuxedo and a gown to the floor. I non-black tie like means you can wear a cool. suit and a and like a cocktail dress. But what's what's the mindset between saying I want a black tie? Well, wedding? I think I think there's a little bit of an audacity. I think there's an audacity as and well. To, and listen, I'm one of the most audacious people I know. I respect it. You'll have a black tie wedding. I wouldn't. No, my wedding is going to be. I already well. It depends on who, it depends on who I'm getting married to, how much money I have at that time, and where the wedding is. But in my head, my dream is outdress, outdress the the grooms, and I want you to probably come in costume. I think it's gonna be like uh, like right now, my dream wedding is at TWA Airport. I wanna I wanna yeah. lock down the whole airport, have the wedding there, and I want everyone to come dressed in like '60s mod. That could be really but like cute. Just mix it up like alien sixties mod. Like I want some people like dressed in complete like blue body paint. You know, like just like have Ooh. fun with it. Just be inspired. But like I don't want anyone to feel like they're like constrained or like 
being choked out by the the dress restraints, the yeah. dress code at my wedding. Well, thank you because I think that I was wondering. Well, you're head. gonna be in full drag. I feel. I feel like you need. You're gonna have to look like Juno Birch. Okay, like I I will be in full drag. Like, are you gonna like? I love that it just pivoted to us planning your wedding. <laughs> but do you think that you're gonna have like bridesmen? You don't. I'm not gonna do that to someone. I'm not gonna do that to someone. Why? Because I think it'd be hell. Okay. Well, I'm gonna do that to you. Am I gonna be your best man? It's gonna be. Well, there are gonna be two best men. You're gonna be the best man. Who's the second one? I feel like I have a brother. Yeah, I know, and it's t- it, that's that's another thing. It's like it it is tough when it gets to a sibling in your family, because it's like, you know, yeah, there's almost an obligation. It's like, is is it the best man or the bestest man? You know, my sister. It was easy for her because she was a- able to do a maid of honor and a matron of honor, because mom was married. What the hell is a matron? They're married. Isn't that crazy? That's kind of not. I know. I know. But it's also just like you can't choose. Wedding rules are insane. Weddings are some of the most, the biggest pomp and circumstance of anything I've ever seen in my entire life. I pity the bride. I pity the bride in Mm -hmm. every wedding. I can't even imagine the kind of agony, Uh. anxiety, stress, hell, trauma that it takes to plan a wedding. Is it worth it? Are they enjoying it? Is it worth it? Because I wonder that like when I see the bride themselves walking around the wedding and thanking everybody for being there and then I see their food on their table and they're not even they're not eating, eating it. They're not drinking. They're not drinking. And like if you're not going to eat your food on your table, you're I will. It, and I've seen you do it. I've I did it t- once, Joe. Yeah. I did it once. Out of your, one of your best friend's weddings, I saw you take her food off of her plate at her wedding. Caroline, I know you're listening. It wasn't even your food. It was your desserts. I also took some. Yeah, because I wanted the fried Oreo. Who do you think first said, let me fry an Oreo? I think it was just a random Joe or a Maria working a carnival. They were making Zeppelis. And they were sell- They were thinking, how can, I, how can I level up here? Give me the Oreos. They dip it in the thing, they drop it in the oil, and then the next thing you know, it's one of the best things you've ever had. I think the, that that creator should be credited with that creation. I, I absolutely get Maria in the room. Should I create a movie about Maria? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Thank you. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm getting sucked into the funnel cake world. I don't prefer a funnel cake to a to a zeppeli. I a think funnel cake is too messy because the funnel cake. You have to be, this is the truth about a funnel cake. And I'm going to be completely honest and serious right now. You have to sit down. I was going to say, you have to be seated. You have to be seated because you (laughs) legitimately cannot, like, there is nothing worse than going up, getting a funnel cake, and And then having to walk around with with a a soggy paper plate with your funnel cake for everyone to see. It's reckless. It's irresponsible. And then again, you're covered. You're covered head to toe in powdered sugar D- dust everywhere your phone your phone screen will never be the same gone it'll be gooky and gunky until you die but you know what it's like i get it zeppelis are the way to go right because they're easy you pop yes. them in like again you're, quick, you simple. still might get dusted but it's almost less in vain why aren't we making smaller funnel cakes funnel cake fries We've had funnel them. cake fries but like little what about like funnel cake nests like they can be small they, all you have to do is like what they're doing is just dripping. <laughs> oh, in there. you're saying like a Zeppelin size, size funnel, cake. funnel cake, because it's different. Because it's like you you're poppable, doing a funnel cake, a for, poppable cake, because you're doing it for the texture, like a funnel cupcake, a, a funnel, funnel cupcake. cupcake. And then, but now I'm saying, what about frosting? Why not? You want to put frosting on a funnel cake though? Yeah, maybe. I mean, I guess they're dipping it in powdered sugar, so powdered sugar what is if just you a were frosting. Like, what? Oh god, this sucks. This sucks. Like, because I'm like, what if you were dunking? A funnel cake in like a chocolate shell, half of it, half of chocolate shell. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I don't think that would be bad. I don't think you that anyone would be upset. And a chew, a crunch and a chew. Yeah, I kind of think that would be very good. Are we the funnel cake guys? The funnel cake faggots. Yeah. <laughs> the FCFs. Yeah. Wait, I kind of love being a funnel cake faggot. Yeah. Well, anyways, are we talking weddings or are we talking Go ahead, carnival? Go no, like, talk about whatever you want to talk about. But to your point of the carnival. Though, yeah. Yeah. I, I know that you want to have your your wedding at a TWA. I want my wedding to be a carnival. That's cute. Right? Like, I kind of think if it was outdoors, there's a bunch of different vendors. Like, 
I want Zeppelin. You want it to be the I, Columbus Day Fair? <laughs> Joe, Joe, yes, I do. <laughs> no, I do want it to be like a fair and I want it to have sausage and peppers. I want that to almost be my cocktail hour. Cocktail hour. You would, you would, wouldn't you almost, I almost think that's the Viennese. The Viennese is my because on my truck. Because you want people to gorge on fried dough before eating. No, but I do want it to be outdoor. Like I think it would be stunning in the carnival setting, and like there's a Ferris wheel. You know what I mean? Like you can like have fun. It could be cute. There are pictures, and then it's like gorgeous lights everywhere. And then I guess for the Viennese, all right, let's let's fire them up. Let's are fire you up those have, trucks. Like, circus acts running around. Uh, like, there's going to be a few circus acts running around. Yeah, it's just the attendees of my wedding. I'm taking it away from a catering hall, and I'm taking it into a place that I, I don't believe for one second. For one second. That you would not have your wedding in a catering hall. Let's be fucking serious. I'm not having my wedding in a catering yes, hall. Yes, you are. I've been behind the doors at a catering hall. I've been in those kitchens at a catering hall. I've been down the You're down the having block. your wedding at an old I'm not stepping foot in that place ever again. Ever again. And but you know what? When I do step in there with my husband to be, we're all gonna scream Mary Cohen. The thing is, what happens behind the doors of a catering hall in the kitchen? It's mess, slop, filth. They'll give you anything. They'll give you anything. What does that mean? It's just like the the health standards in the kitchen sometimes aren't the safest. I think that like they'll drop a few fries or something and they'll put them on your plate. You Where know I mean? are the health standards actually? Like, because here's the thing. If I ran a restaurant. I would forget to wash my hands sometimes. Oh, of course. And I, because I would see employees must wash hands. I'd forget. I'd get used to that sign. And I can't imagine. I can't even pretend to assume or play pretend that every restaurant worker is 10 out of 10 very germ free, wow. consciously washing their hands for 30 seconds, doing those ABCs twice. And never sick, never drops anything, and never is a little too tired to fix the situation. Because I've worked a job before, mm-hmm. any job, I fuck up. Am I Everyone always am I up. always going backwards and fixing the fuck up from Everyone square one? Up. No, I'm putting the chicken tender back on the plate and walking out there. I completely agree. I completely agree. And even if I was to have a few chicken tenders or suck my fingers a little bit, I probably would still touch the food. That's disgusting. What do you mean, Joe? <laughs> I've only hypothetically worked at the restaurant. You literally have. You're speaking from experience. I'm speaking from imagination. I didn't touch the food. I didn't touch the food. I didn't touch the food. But I did eat their food. I know you know what? I did eat the food. I ate the food. I think you've already admitted that in this podcast. Don't worry about that. Don't even worry. At what point in your gay adolescence mm-hmm. did life become four weddings? <sighs> Well, I think that like once I started, when did Forty Weddings even start? Because I feel like I was I watching like in like middle 2000s, school. Two thousands, yeah. I think I was watching in middle school. I think that like it had such a chokehold on my life that like to see these women like pin themselves against each other and to re- what it just felt very personal because yeah. it's like it's a wedding, it's a wedding, and okay, she's getting the dress. She's getting her gown. She feels amazing in that gown. And then, they and say then they're like, two. Two. Two out of ten. Did dress you see does that not dress? fit her. The, and like the, you see the church ceremony, and they're like, it's all about them. Yes. makes me die. Can you it's- imagine you're getting married, and there is a camera crew pointing at three people you've never met before except last week yep. who are competing on a show to have a better wedding than you? To, to win a honeymoon. They're winning the honeymoon and they're like, the cameras are on them and they're outside and they're just like, oh my gosh. Hot in there. It's hot in here. I kind of loved though watching Four Weddings for the context of they were getting married in different states that were not New York, especially not Long Island. Because I think that Long That's Island different. weddings are very unique in the catering hall that you choose. In the same way that a Sweet 16 on Long Island is unlike anywhere else in the it's entire just world. It's always, I feel like, Stepped up to the gaudy, gaudiest place to it the can gods. get. It's stepped up to the gods. It's anything that you can possibly imagine to eat for that the cocktail hour. It's like 
you know, I loved your sister's wedding. Do not get me wrong. Don't get you wrong. People were like freshly pulling Mutsid out. Right. Yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? And so it's, it's, like, it's like, how did we get here? <laughs> exactly. How did we get here as a culture? How did we, how did we move away from the charcuterie board? To was there a fresh pulled mozzarella? That she had in? fresh pulled mozzarella station, Joe. She had a fresh pulled mozzarella. What does that station. even mean? There was like a pot of mozzarella being like boiled. They were like they were like twisting mutts. Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, they were doing that. They had a sushi. They had like there's tacos. There's all these different yeah. things. It's like what do you mean? No, because mean? like when's dinner? Right. That was it. That's just cocktail. Hour. It's just cocktail. We kind of need to, like, move away from dinner as a culture. Wait, what do you mean? Like, don't you think, imagine every day of your life, instead of having dinner, you're just doing, like, cocktail hour. Well, I mean, are we talking the cocktail hour I was just saying? Yeah, like a tapas situation. Yeah, I would, that's what I mean. Yeah, I think like, that I we feel can... like American dinner, I'm so over it. Like, I want to walk around a room and select 15 different items and just like that. Like, we don't need a dinner at a wedding. You don't need a dinner at a wedding if you have you a don't. cocktail hour. You genuinely don't. And you it's don't. like, that's okay. Have the cocktail hour be the whole night. Because you know what? Because you know what? The only thing... Personally, and this is because I'm obsessed with food. The only thing that I'm really clocking at a wedding at the end of the day is the meal. And the meal is never as, as good, good as, as the, the cocktail, cocktail hour. hour. It's because not. the cocktail hour, you have variety, you have option, you have choice. It's not even about the food itself. It's about the experience you get while getting the food. And at a cocktail hour, you were saying, shave me off a piece of that roast beef. Mm-hmm. Make me a delicious pasta with cheese right in front of my eyes. Mm-hmm. So, Everything you could possibly imagine is right in front of your face. And then you have dinner. You have one choice. You have one choice. And you know what? And it's the illusion of choice. It makes me think sometimes with these weddings, with these events. Why? How did they get that many steaks? And how are Here they all go. cooked to the level that I want it to be cooked to? I'm reading a book. I've read, I've read two books in the past week. And I'm on my third book. First book, Julia Fox's memoir. Yep. Second book, Britney Spears' yep. memoir. Third book. Tender is the flesh. It's about a uh, society in which all animals contract a virus. This is written before COVID, which was surprising. Every animal contracts a virus and they all have to be killed because okay. the virus is deadly. So there's no more meat. So then they're like, what if we start like breeding humans for meat consumption? It's a crazy book. It's a crazy book. I'll I'm say just kind of like. How did we get there for my steak? Oh, like I thought, <laughs> <laughs> in my head it was like in my head I was thinking like you were like how did they get all these steaks? And I was like, well, the book is about. I think the book is really I about. I love what just happened because <laughs> it was like, like I was like, how are they serving so much steaks? And you're like, I'm actually reading this book where they're like, how can we breed humans for no, consumption? It's, it's, here, I'll connect it. The book feels like it's about the animal. Um, industry like yeah. the meat industry in a very real way to the point where I actually well I had chicken for lunch but I was thinking I'm gonna probably like scale back on meat again mm. and I'm only like 10 pages in but I was like oh this is kind of so fucked up and it's li- like I just I think that how are they getting all those steaks and how are they treating those animals and why do we decide why have we decided as as people that animals are we fine are fine eat. with them being slaughtered and like you know thrown into a fucking truck and like being separated from their children and their mothers and being chopped but we up. can't do that to humans you know what i mean and that book is really already enlightening me and i'm gonna get them 10 pages and there's a very scary reality where i go back to vegetarian and, and it's a scary, scary reality, reality when, when i, I join vegan. you if i go vegan just like ariana grande i just like yeah. If yeah. you do it now, I do it with you. It's like not even worth I'm it. I'm kidding. It's not. <laughs> it's not even worth it. It's this not is actually a it. podcast documenting the slow and eventual gradual turn towards veganism. Yeah. We had the chicken conversation a couple months ago. Yeah. Now there is this. Just wait. Just mm-hmm. wait. Those vegans out there, stick it out. Stick it stick out. Stick it out. We'll stick get it out. Speaking of sticking it out. I love a wedding with a Viennese hour. If you're trying to flex anything, any muscle, it's dessert. It's, it's, dessert. it's the it's Viennese sparklers. hours. Because is that unique to here? I don't think so. You think there's Viennese hours across the country? I think I'm sure. I'm, I'm almost positive. I just feel like it's it's 
you tack on probably I can only assume twenty thousand extra dollars for your wedding for the Vietnamese <laughs> hour. You're kidding? No, I swear to you. How much money is a wedding? People spend. People could spend. Okay, I can only assume up to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. On a Long Island wedding. Yeah. I think that some other places like you can probably get a wedding for like seventy k. That's still really thirty k. I think that it's like it depends on what you're willing to sacrifice and what you're what you actually want. I feel like Long Island there is this culture that's convinced you you need to spend one hundred and fifty thousand mm-hmm. dollars on a wedding, and in reality, your wedding could be two thousand dollars. It could be less than that if you yeah. actually think about what you actually want. Yeah, because I don't want those bitches there. I don't want those bitches there. What bitches? Like my like great aunts. Like yeah. I don't like I'm sorry to them, but like I don't I can't need... believe that like you actually said I don't want those bitches there and you thought that everyone would know who they were. <laughs> they were your great aunts. Like <laughs> I feel so bad. Everyone did know. When I said those bitches, everyone listening had a thought said of who their aunt. those bitches yeah. are. Yeah. But it's like I don't need those people there. Like they don't mm-hmm. know me. I don't know no. them. And it's like, yeah, we're blood related, but I don't know you. Yeah, you and don't need to be at my 1960s themed uh, uh, wedding because it wants to, like that's the thing about weddings. It's like, I, I mean, it's probably Italian culture too. It's like it, it's just like if you met them once, once, they have to be there. They have to be there. It's like my sister's wedding was like 300 people, and like for what? For what? For what? For what? But you're kind of like bankrolling. I feel like. But are you or are you just like are you like netting just, at like you're, netting. you're just like coming in at zero? Yeah, you're netting. Feel lavender is creeping up on me. Can you rank your favorite desserts that you would get at a Viennese hour, please? Yeah, for once. For once. Well, I'll tell you one thing: the Viennese hour, if it doesn't have, and this could be tacky, but if it doesn't have an ice cream bar, fuck you. I think that you need to have a good serving of cheesecake. I would say the top one for me though is going to be your signature hot dessert by that what i mean is a molten lava cake for some for some sometimes it is like a creme brulee they're freshly creming it they're freshly flambéing it um that's always top tier and i what i want to see towering over your entire table is fondue i need a fountain I can't. I need a fountain. I can't share in a viscous hot liquid with 275 other people, including children. I can't do that. Why? Because I don't, first You're of all. You're sick and poking. Yeah, but I don't trust a child around a fondue, first of all. And honestly, I don't trust most adults. You wouldn't trust me with a fondue? Andrew, if anyone, and this goes out to anyone who's listening, if you were ever in a situation where there is a fondue fountain and there is a chocolate fountain and there is Andrew, do not have the fondue. That's not true because I You're going to walk out safe, with hep A, B, I and C. practice always safe measures in anything No, that you I do. do not. And especially when it comes to fondue, I swear to you. I will stick a st- the that damn skewer in it, and I'll swirl it around the chocolate. I might be lingering at the fountain for 45 seconds, but that's because in my mind, I'm thinking, I, this strawberry needs to be perfectly coated, and I need to have a few of them. I might think, yeah, am I going to reach for the Rice Krispie Treat? And the Rice Krispie Treat might not be the one that gets stuck. And yeah, if a finger slipped in that chocolate, I'm sorry. I'm literally so sorry. But like, I'm not going to be like wiping my ass and then going to scoop chocolate. You know what I mean? There are worse things in the world. There I'll, are worse things. Yeah, like sharing a bag of Doritos with you. Just don't do that. We were at a wedding recently. We were at our, one of our best friend Rachel's weddings. I'm walking with Andrew. Um, He makes a sudden right turn out. <laughs> <laughs> He makes a sudden right turn toward the like toward like the outdoor space. Like we were on the vineyard. Did you tell Rachel this? I told Rachel. <laughs> um I told everyone we know, I'm sorry to say. I told a lot of people this story that I'm telling the podcast. So actually what happens is m- my mother is at this wedding, all of our friends are at this wedding, we're dancing in a group circle. My mom stops me and goes, Andrew looks like he's about to throw up. I look at Andrew. You see the number three all over his face. Okay. Okay. (laughs) Listen up. This is because 
this cocktail hour, there was a Waldorf chicken salad and I couldn't stop with the Waldorf. And then I was having pesto gnocchi. Like I can't control myself and I have digestive issues. My whole entire life have been throwing up like at parties on people. We know that. So I got to a point just because I'm 27 doesn't mean that goes away. I still got to throw up. So I tell Joe, we're going up to the bar and I'm like, I'm going to go outside for a second. You're like, wait for me. I'm like, no, Joe, I no, can't that's, wait for no, you. No, 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 no. Me and you walk to the bathroom first. Yeah. And you were like, yeah, I'm going to do it. Yeah. We get into the bathroom and let's actually have a secondary conversation now. Why can't you pee the urinal? Why can't you pee the so urinal? So it's actually really funny that you brought that up because this past weekend. It happened for you? Well, I peed once at the urinal. And what I was thinking, I, well, one, I had to close my eyes. And I had to say to myself, like, you got this, you got this, you got this. Or I sing, like, myself a little tune. I'll be, like, whatever is in my mind at the time. And I'll, like, be able to work myself up to, like, pee. But this past weekend, I had to pee so badly. And there was just so many people around me. And I just, like, walked out. I But it's so, it's so embarrassing because, like, you still, like, dang. Like, you know what I mean? You still kind of, like, shake it off. And... I'm not shaking shit. Like, so then, like, after I fake piss and then, like, I performatively act a shake, the shake of the tip, then I walk out. And it, like, really put it into perspective for me this weekend that, like, why can't I do that? Like, where does that anxiety come from? That's why what I'm asking you. It? Like, it's like, I feel like I remember being a gay child and not being able to use a urinal. Like, it really made me embarrassed. But then something switched to me at some point in my life. And I was like, I just, I'm going to piss like all the other but men here. But it's not even like I'm embarrassed if anyone's to look. Like, it, that, that's not even the case. Like, it's just like, no, I know. But like, I that could, that could be one of the anxieties. The other anxiety is like comfort. That's why like I'm also like putting on the sink when I go to the bathroom. Right. Like to shit. Yeah. Well, shitting is different. It's like, different. It's a little different than pissing. But like the... You know what I mean with when you put on the water, there's something soothing about it. Yeah. Like, I don't feel soothed. If I don't feel soothed in a bathroom, I can't go to the bathroom. I have to feel soothed. I feel like I understand that, but I think that pissing is just a little different. Like, I feel like it's just a little bit more in tune with, like, your animal self. Yes. But I don't feel like you're in tune with your animal self no, at all. I'm not in tune with my animal like, And I also, like... I could never understand where this is going to be a whole pissing conversation. Yeah, of course. I could never understand people who would be like, let's cross streams. Obviously for multiple reasons. Who? Oh, I've been in so many situations where people are like, let, let, they oh, want to fuck cro- you. crossing streams. No, that was like that. straight men in Whoever, college. No, yeah. Well, straight men in college. I'm sorry. If you're peeing next to a man and they want to cross streams with you, they are horny. Or like a experiment. few men like in the same stall and like they just like, like a few, a few dicks are out and they're just like pissing in the... What has never about? happened to you? No. That's happened to me like a few times. And you've stood there pretending to pee? No, I've stood there being like, oh, I don't think I can do it. Or sometimes I did do it because it was like there's other dicks there. It was kind of like now that I look back on it, like what was going on? Who was this? These were just like random. Like sometimes it would be like at a club in college and there'd be like it would be so packed that like multiple men would be like in the stall. No. What? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But anyway, regardless. So you can't pee in public. I can't pee in public, but we go to the bathroom at this wedding and Joe's going to the bathroom and then there's other people in there. So I'm not going to like do number three. I'm not going to like do that to anybody that was there because it was going to be like a... It's going to be not silent. Ch- it's gonna, it was going to be a Waldorf. It was going to be, yeah. And that was, like, it was thick chicken. A number three that's a Waldorf, Waldorf can't be good for anyone. No. So then we leave the bathroom and we walk to the bar. And I'm like, Joe, I'm actually going to head outside for a second. Because I knew that when I went outside, I was going to be alone. But and you I was said to me, like, I just want to head outside. And I was like, oh, I'll go for the walk with you. And you were like, No. I want to be alone. <laughs> and I was like, what do you mean? Like, or what are you going to do? I was like, are you going to go like, smoke weed? And you were like, no. I just want to be alone for a second. Like, I want to go for a walk. I want to be out by myself. And I like, remember leaving and being like, oh, he's absolutely throwing up. Where did you throw up? 
you want to know the spot did you go over the bridge you thought i was gonna throw up in the water like back over there no close by close by close by you walk out that door you turn right and like that's the space that no one's really in because everybody else was like that was like where the wedding reception and like the people would take pictures were to the left i went to the right i went around the corner and i just let loose I'm sorry to the people that had to clean it up the next day. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. To I'm them. really sorry to them, but but I'm also like I'm sorry for myself. And sometimes I can't explain myself all the time. Like I just like there are moments that like I am upset with myself, and that was a moment that I was upset with myself. But you know what I could do after I did it? Live. And I had a great rest of the night, and I was perky, and it was fun. But before that, I couldn't dance. I couldn't. I just couldn't be myself. I couldn't be myself. Are you ever really being yourself? Yeah, Joe. I would hope that this is myself. Like, I'm talking actually publicly about me throwing up at weddings. Like, <laughs> what do you mean? Have I ever thrown up outside? <laughs> the way that this is starting. <laughs> I don't think I have. Yeah. You should try it sometimes. It's kind of like... Is it like... A well, it's, it's like I think that there is something really... Like, like puts you back in touch with yourself when you piss outside, like pissing in nature. You think that like it brings you back to like, like cavemen? Yeah, like I feel like that's how you're supposed to be peeing is outside you know? mm-hmm. until you like until like you're like walking around New York City and just well, smells like piss. And also, I'm sorry, I don't mean pissing on the streets of New York, <laughs> which I see more often than I don't now. At least once a day, I see a man in full view yeah. of children of adults of everyone yes. just pissing yeah no it's it's just what are we doing we've lost touch with reality what are we doing what are we doing we're not we're not keeping it in the pants well we gotta keep it in the what were you gonna say that was no i was just saying oh i wasn't saying that you're not keeping it in your pants we're like fighting that was i wasn't even trying to it's that like time. weird because like we're getting through this conversation but like we're fighting. I wasn't fighting you at all. I feel like maybe maybe you're sensing some aggression because you're being aggressive, but I'm not. <laughs> Something about a wedding is like there's always this idea that you're going to fuck someone. They are like kind of horny. Especially when you're single. I know. Yeah. Well, I feel like hopefully only when you're, sing- like, when you're single. Do you, you feel that way? Because it's like if I was single and straight and I was going to a wedding, I'd feel like at least I have a better opportunity. But I feel like the likelihood that there's another gay at a wedding that I'm attending is very low. Every wedding I've attended of people who are my age has been f- riddled with gays to the point where it's like it, they should be shut down. I guess maybe I'm not even maybe I'm not even clocking them. What do you mean? Alone, our friend group brings about six gays minimum. I'm not fucking the six gays, right? My friends. That, but then there are other gays who are in the, the the arena. I guess I am so focused on the cocktail hour. Anything can happen at a wedding. You can find the love of your life at a wedding. Have you ever fucked at a wedding or after a wedding? Fucked at or after a wedding? No, I thought I was gonna come close. When when I was in Lake Placid for my cousin's wedding. Because it was like you got to stay in your own little room and I was like, oh, I'm going to like get somebody on Grinder. Then I was like, what am I doing? I'm in Lake Placid. Like, <laughs> I don't need to find some random person to come over to this room right now. Like, I'll be fine. What alone. am I doing? I'm in Lake, Lake Placid. Placid. <laughs> like, that's just We've like. We've all said that before. What's your favorite thing to binge eat? Chips. Again, like, I I, chips. that's just so easy for me. Like, I can just take them down, especially if it's like a Cape Cod, like kettle chip but those are the almost bag too is, crunchy yeah but like for me these teeth can g- go through anything right and then also like a cookie like i you can binge eat a cookie joe joe like and i know i'm gonna feel so sick and i'll probably will throw up but like i can eat like especially like a pillsbury sugar cookie the way that okay the other night <laughs> we had this like first of all the thing about joe is like he is a great host he like is a host right? well i'm I almost wouldn't say that. I would say I'm a good events producer. Yeah. You were the host in that situation. I was the host in the situation. I was, I was telling you provoked by the event producer to, <laughs> to to buy everything at the store for our one friend because we were hosting. So I get all this different shit. I made the Pillsbury cookies. There was 24 of them made. There was three of us. Our friend Garrett had maybe two. 
so you can do the math andrew that was sick though because Joe. also like we had all that hummus we had we had the chips we had the, the french onion dip the, it was the whole dip. thing of sour cream yeah like we and that's the problem with us like you put me and you in front of a yeah. a, a, a table of light snacks yeah and they don't become light anymore. No. It does not like it is so serious. It is so scary. It is so mindless. The way yeah. that it is. Yeah. Because we're just sitting there and it's just there. So it's, it's like methodical. You might as well finish. And it really does always go back to like finish what's on your plate. Like finish what's in front of you. Like, I know. I just like I don't even think I just swoop. I literally just scoop and swoop. Like that's yeah. all I, I want to do. I soup. I swoop. And, and I, I sop. Sco- yeah. And I and then yeah, and then I'm sopping. And I'm then I'm sopping. upset. Then I'm upset. Yeah. But I'm never normally upset until like the next day. The next day or like sometimes like an hour after the <sighs> deed's been done. I remember I'm looking back on that last week. I remember being really upset about midway through. I remember saying oh. I feel horrible. Yeah. And then I said, where is that French onion dip? Yeah. And that's we also cleared part. a charcuterie board. We cleared the charcuterie. And we cleared, I think there was honestly more. We had like wine and like Coke. Two bottles. A couple, ca- couple cans. Of Coke? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Joe, like that was definitely like, it put it into that perspective weird. that like we need to like definitely figure some things out in our lives. Yeah. What's your favorite thing to binge drink? Binge drink? Yeah. It is probably a Coke. A soda. A Diet Coke? No, I mean like drink alcohol. But oh. first, before you even get into it, my favorite thing to binge eat has to be a Dorito. Has to be. Yeah. Or a Pringle. I could, I could clear a can. I haven't seen you clear a can in so long, but you were a can clearer yes. for so yeah. long. Because I could get my whole fist down that tube. Yeah, you were, you were your whole yeah your whole forearm was down yes, that tube. Yeah. And it was nice to see you in your natural habitat. Thank you. You're welcome. Ben's drink? Besides, like, a boring seltzer. That is boring. It's I'm, boring. I don't, I don't really... But I'm not, like, a binge... I, okay, I would binge drink tequila. It's tequila. Tequila, like, I agree. Anything tequila, but, like, I'm not binge drinking in, like, liquid... Like, like th- amount of liquid. I'm binge drinking because I'm taking shots. Right. Because I don't... This is the thing. I don't like drink... Like... I don't like the act of putting a lot of liquids in my stomach because my stomach's probably already hurting from the food that I've already been eating. So why fill it even more? Let's get the job done. Let's take a shot. Let's do the shot. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I really don't remember the last time I was drunk drunk. I don't think I've been drunk drunk to a point where someone has to like help me. Well, I, that's, in a while. that I don't think is drunk. That's danger drunk that's in my like opinion. Inebriated. Yeah. The last time I was like doing that was like when we first moved, first moved into Driggs. I don't think I've ever done that. Been that inebriated? I don't think I've ever had someone have to take. No, that's a lie. Besides New Year's Eve, which we all know I was not in a great place. But right. Besides that day, that woke me up, I guess, because I've and never a Halloween again. 2018. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? When you were wailing. Oh, I was like, yeah, Joe, I almost <laughs> forgot for a second. I was like, no, you're right. Um, um, yeah, no, binge drinking like is 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 not really the thing for me in large volumes, but I will binge drink shots. Yeah, What's I would drink? say I like a tequila soda. But I'm like begging for something new. I really want to be one of those bitches that like makes cocktails at home. Like, I really think that'd be so nice. Like, but it's just like. I'm just not that kind of girl, and it's a shame. Like, I would love... It's weird that you're not, because I think I I see you on the street, and I'm like, that bitch makes makes an espresso martini at his house. I know, and I think I could be. I think maybe I'm not there yet. I think that my story isn't finished. Yeah. I think my journey isn't over. I think if I believe in myself and I apply myself yeah. and I and I go to this to the liquor store and buy a few ingredients, I could make an amazing espresso martini. <laughs> Good children to the guidance office. Do you shave your ass? No. I would have never you ever? I have before. Like inside? Yeah. I just feel like for me it's like it's getting to a point. Right? Because I see Harry ass, you mean like I have seen it. I've seen it because I've seen like hairy asses before and it's like, whoa, like that's nice. That's like a hairy ass. But like mine's like not even that hairy until like you spread. And it's like, whoa. I'm just going to leave that in because at this point, it's like, you know, <laughs> at this point, 
what do we ha- what do we even do with that? Where do we have to? Lose? Where do we go from that? Well, I don't know. Let's go to the I, office. I. But like, how do you even trim? How would I trim? Do I ask you? You're asking me to trim your asshole hair, Israel. <laughs> Is that what you're asking? I just want to confirm. <laughs> is that what there's? Is that where the conversation's going to end? Because if so, it's content. It's content. If so, it's we're content. putting the camera facing you like this, so it's your face. I'm back here, and we just don't see anything else. I'm like, I would trust somebody else's eye on it as opposed to me not being able to see what's happening. You know, like if you need me to trim your hole for you, <laughs> just give me like a twenty-four hour warning. Okay, you'll mentally prepare yeah. yourself. Hi, boys. Um, first of all, love the pod. I listen to it every day on my evening walks, like I'm on right now. Um, but I'm just calling for some advice. I've been struggling for a while with like being able to handle anxiety after drinking. And it's not like I do anything crazy sometimes and worse than others and maybe I'm a little bit sloppy, but I'm not like making bad decisions when I'm drunk, but I just can't help but feel so shameful the next morning when I wake up and for the whole day. And it's really debilitating and it makes me not want to drink, which is hard because I like to drink and I like to have fun while I'm doing it, but I just, I don't know if it's like a good child thing where I like feel like I did something bad or wrong, or if it's that my group of friends that I'm with isn't supporting me and making me feel like I was normal or if I, I, maybe it's a control thing. I don't really know, but if you guys have any advice on that, I'd really appreciate it because it's hard to be, a young 20 something year old girly out in the streets and feel like you can't go and have fun with your friends without having a horrible day the next day. And I can't explain that to anyone because they're like, you didn't do anything wrong. And I know I didn't do anything wrong, but I just always feel like a gnawing gut reaction that I did something wrong. So if you guys have experience on that, please give me some advice and love you. Bye. I honestly think like, if it's that you feel shameful for the night before, that that is aiding in your guilt. But I think that, like, sip your water the next day. You don't have to be shameful. If nothing went wrong, don't be mad at yourself. I don't think I'm often, like, shameful for the night before and, like, my actions as much as I am. Like, I feel like shit was. And then I get that. depressed. Then I get depressed. Yeah, get well, like, depre- my depression. I get depressed really fast. I like, don't yesterday have, I was depressed. I was, yeah. Th- I think that's what I was experiencing this weekend, too, was, like, just severe depression because I was, like, I'm just drinking so much, but I don't get anxious the next day. I feel like I maybe did, but when I, I would get really messy and then I'd be anxious. But I feel like, I hate to say it, Diva, it seems like maybe sobriety is an option for you. Yeah. Because if it's like, if you're drinking and you're drinking casually and you're not even like getting fucked up to the point where you're causing a problem and you feel that way, don't keep making yourself feel that way. Yeah. You know, like maybe it's like if you avoid the feeling of anxiety by not doing the thing that makes you have anxiety. And also it's like, how much are you actually drinking? Because one of my friends, she also has really bad hang anxiety, but she also thinks that she did things the night before that she didn't do so she wakes up the next morning she's like oh my god like did i talk to this person did i say this thing to that person no but she's just a hyper anxious person right but she has then dialed back on how much she's drinking so she doesn't feel anxious and is in more control of her body that she's not shamed for what she might have done the day before that's a good point you know maybe take a step back take a step back and like that's the thing about being a young 20 something is like We just talked about binge drinking, but casually drink. Like, sip on the same drink. You don't need to catch up with other people. Yeah. Ooh. Come come on, Joe Joe and Andrew. Andrew. Ooh. Let's go to the drive-thru. Going on a trip with your favorite kids. Gonna grab a snack. Then we'll we'll be right back. Good Good children. children. You hate it. I hate it. (laughs) I literally hate it. That song. Then work on something yourself Self. privately and come pitch it to me. At I some will. point this week, come to my office. Schedule time. 
I'll, I'll do you have like a Calendly link or something? A who? <sighs> Whatever. I missed the entrance. Should I roll up the windows? I'm excited about this one. This is all Andrew. Oh my God, we're gonna Oh see. God! Oh my God, my neck, my neck. The thing about Long Island, like it's just exciting. With specificity to this parking lot, is like you got Longhorn Steakhouse, PDQ, Kudoba, Taim, Mogu, Chinese. This is, I mean, you don't have to go anywhere else. Okay. You have some time because there's no one behind us. So I'll tell you one thing. I had, I, this was one of my first TikToks actually. What should I say with it? Honey butter, the honey butter chicken sandwich dripping in honey butter. Yeah, I want that. Buffy blue. Okay, you want honey butter. Um, we don't need nuggets. Do we want sides, waffle fries? Do you want a drink? I want a Diet Coke. A Diet Coke. I feel like they must have sauces. And I want fries. I want waff waffies. Okay. And get creative with the sauces. Can I get the PDQ sauce and then honey the ranch and honey mustard? I creamy garlic. You just always want every freaking sauce. You wanted the creamy garlic sauce for what? For waffle fries. So you can dip it in 18 sauces? Yes. Have a great day, guys. You too. Thank you. Thank you. I'm actually very, very excited because if you guys know this shopping center, you know it really has everything because you also, across the street, get Panera, you get Chipotle, you get um, Halal Guys. You get, like, I would move into the hotel here. And I've stayed there before. I would move into it as well because, because you really, also get Walmart. You get Walmart. And you, down the road, you get the movie theater. You know what I mean? You, oh, across the street, right, you right, got right, the right, movie theater. The street, this is the best possible intersection. You, why do they get a lemonade? Why did you get a lemonade, you freak, 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 freak? I know, I should have gotten something else, but I was so distracted by the 18 sauces I needed to order. Diet Coke, I'm gonna say it's a four out of 10. Here you go, Andrew. I like the packaging. Oh, the lemonade is tart. Tart. So, PDQ stands for people dedicated to quality. <laughs> So, Shut the fuck up. I do believe that's a really sweet way to put it. I thought it was pretty damn quick. Pretty, da pretty yeah. damn quick chicken. No, people dedicated to quality. Pretty damn quick. I'm gonna tell you this creamy garlic is gonna be exceptional with a waffle fry. So what'd we get? We got two honey butter chicken sandwiches, waffle fries, and tater tots. There's a ranch honey mustard, a PDQ sauce and the creamy garlic. How's the creamy gar? Oh, you want some? Because you had a problem with me ordering it. No, I mean, if it's in this car, it's also, I would say it's mine. <laughs> Too thin. Okay, it drips in honey butter. And I'm not kidding when I say it drips in honey butter. It's soaked. It's good. This is why I need, I need new friends. It's good. It's amazing. It's all right. Joe, you're gonna tell me that the crisp, the chicken's not crispy. The chicken's very crispy. Yeah. For people dedicated to quality, the quality leaves a lot to be desired. The bun's amazing. The bun is very good, but where, like I have two pickles shoved haphazardly there, as you see. I think it could use a, a piece of lettuce. So now you're talking badly about the workers that are in PBQ. I'm saying it could use a piece of lettuce. It could use, mm -hmm. honestly, like an onion or a tomato. It could even it, like either option. On Joe, a it could use a piece of lettuce. You know what I mean? Like it's pretty not, it's pretty much a non, this is a sandwich I could make at home. It could use a piece of lettuce. The sauce is good, but I feel like it could be accentuated by a savory, savory addition. Honestly, a tomato, I think a tomato would be perfect on this. I think this is one of the better chicken sandwiches I've had. I'm not often getting a chicken sandwich from like a, a drive through But I know that people are getting like Chick-fil-A. Now that I finally got the pickle, that's pretty damn good. Pretty, it's pretty damn good. Do you think I'd be able to effectively make a mashed potato? So, I'll tell you how to make a good one. Tell me. So you gotta get a few mashed potatoes. I'm thinking russet for you. Okay. You want russet. What does that mean? It's just a different type of mash. It's like the normal, it's the normal potato. Don't, let's not get crazy. You don't think I should do like a red? Okay, if you want a red, you keep the skins on. If that's what you like, you I like when I have skin. Then you keep the skins on. What was that noise? You cut them into fours. You You're boil. You're talking about when, they, when you keep the skins on. I know what you mean. Do you like that? I do, I do. Sometimes it just gets lodged in my throat. Well, that's because you don't chew. 
but okay, well, they should be soft enough to be fine. So whatever. So if you wanna keep the skins on, you keep the skins on. You boil till fork tender, and then you, you drain, you put them back in the pot. We're talking butter, we're talking cream, we're talking cream cheese. Separate, separate pot, skillet, some oil, some garlic, and you're gonna just, you're gonna brown. You also could get crazy and cut a bulb of garlic, put in some oil in there, wrap it in tin foil, yeah, throw it in the oven, that. I would do that for squeeze sure. them out, and then mix. Yeah, 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 I would do that. Could be, could be delicious. Could be I mean, delicious. like a chive to it or something. Like yes, chives know. always, chives okay. always. And that's what you think? That's all you really need, salt, pepper. <gasps> now, how would you elevate Upon that, like, what if, like, I know you, you like make it sweet. What if you drop some honey in those mashed potatoes, a honey garlic mashed potato? I think that you can go for that. I think honey. And a little bit of heat, maybe? In the gravy. I can see that you putting in a very sweet gravy. Oh, a sweeter gravy off honey gravy? A, a, a chili honey gravy. All right, Mike. <laughs> yeah, call me Mike. I like my honey's hot. I like my honey's. You think that's what he said? I like my honey's hot. Call me Mike, Mike, Mike. 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 I'm turning like I'm Tina. Tina. No, Ike, Ike, Ike. I'm enjoying this nice little dinner that we're, uh, dinner, <laughs> lunch. This, this, this should is, be dinner. Um, this is like a romantic Parisian evening uh -huh. for us. Um, is this Route 110? Mm-hmm. Do I drive to Dunks? Yeah, double D. I eat very healthy throughout the week. And even I lie. I know you're gonna whip it into this part. Well, because there's a bus behind me that's ready to smack. Hey, can I get um, a medium iced coffee with three pumps of punk pumpkin? Um, and then I'll just do a medium cold brew, please. Medium cold brew with... That's it. Just black. Oh, black? Okay, wrap around. Cool, thank you. No problem. I wish I got the nutty... I, I, I wish I got the nutty pumpkin iced coffee. Why did you do it? Because I saw it when I was pulling away. I don't want a cold brew. I don't want a cold brew. I just feel like the episode is gonna be eight hours long with a 30 minute vlog. You know what? I don't wanna hear any commentary you have to say about the episode lengths because until you sit down and you one, edit, or Here two, listen to an Here episode goes. of our podcast. Here you go. Until you listen to one I listen to every episode. That is absolutely untrue. What was last week's theme? Last week's theme, Joe? I was me lying of us telling a story. It's and it wasn't, and it was dating. Get out. Get out right here. I think you should get out. Mm, mm. I feel so good now. Yeah, no, I definitely like. I I think what the decisions that we make sometimes are interesting. Yeah, and I think that like well, yes. I get that we are on this like drive-through kick, and I'm obsessed with that. I love convenience, but at the same exact time, we are in control of the food that we are deciding to eat on this podcast and there are moments where we're having a little something and it's good and then like we face the repercussions of like how it's gonna face how it's gonna deal with my body and my energy and I just feel as if though what I had today was amazing in the moment and now I'm feeling lethargic I'm feeling lethargy do you know what I mean I, do you know what I mean because I would love a bone broth I would love something warm in my system. It's fall. You know? Speaking of fall, I kind of think I would do a Wendy's chili soon. Oh my <laughs> God. And just like that, what an episode. What an episode. I couldn't tell you what we talked about today. We talked about drinking a lot. We talked about weddings for a second. We talked about catering halls. I feel like it ran the gamut. It ran, a gamut was run, yes. And we'll see you next week for a brand new episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to do your homework. Like, comment, subscribe, rate, review. Write us a little something and spread the good word. Tell your friends about us. Please. Please. And you know where to find us across all social media platforms at Good Children Pod. I'm on Instagram at Andrew Muscarella and on TikTok at, at Andrew underscore Muskie. I'm on Instagram at Joe Hedges and on TikTok at Be Quiet Joe. And we'll see you next week. We'll see you next week. Have I think like my heart is in Havana. What are you saying? What did she say? What are you my saying? My heart is in Havana. Half of my heart is in Havana. Only half? No. She, you know what? She really was stretching that one.